Sheep hunting is one of those things that will test everything about you, physically, mentally, spiritually sometimes. There are days that physically absolutely wear you out. You're climbing steep, rough country. Some days the weather is just brutal on you. Some days you just sit there and say, why do I do this? And then other days when everything's going right, you can't imagine being anywhere else for any other reason. The Sunlight Basin, located in northeastern Wyoming, provides the casual passerby with a view that's both memorable and thrilling. As a migration corridor to some of the most historic game herds in Wyoming, this stretch of land has provided many hunting enthusiasts a level of success they have never reached before. Second generation outfitter John Porter has guided in these mountains for over three decades. Each year, John pins up new friends and memories. This year, John has the great privilege of guiding his own sister, Robin Rick from Cody, Wyoming. Hunting a bighorn sheep is oftentimes the pinnacle of their hunting experience for their lifetime. You won't pack that very far, buddy. I feel so blessed to be able to go out there with those guys because at the end of the day when they walk up and they touch that ram and they look at his horns and the look on their face is just, it's something I can't even express. It, it just makes it all worthwhile, all the work you went through and the preparation. is It's just such a unique experience. Over 35 years of guiding now, I've been so blessed to be able to do this time after time. I've been able to take over 137 rams, as near as I keep track of, probably why my knees are getting worn out, but I love it. Obviously addicted to the sport. So this year was really an awesome year for me. I finally, after all of these years of drawing and putting in, I finally drew my sheep tag. And it was one of those things that you just, you can't hardly believe it when you finally get the notification that you actually drew a sheep tag. I've done more than 50 of these hunts with John. We've covered so much country together. We've seen some really incredible things out there in the mountains together and, and made some great memories. The sheep hunting is by far my favorite. It's definitely the best time of the year to be in the mountains. The weather's changing, the leaves are turning on the trees and the bulls are bugling and the animals are all as fat and slick and healthy as they're going to be and it's just the most incredible time of year. It's my favorite to be in the mountains. This season starts for me the first of September or even a couple days before that when we're packing in and of course all the preparation before that but as usual, when myself or my sister or my brother draws a tag, it seems like that's a year when I've got a whole bunch of other sheep hunters. So off I go on the first sheep hunt, and then another one, and then another one, and then another one, and then a goat hunt, and then a moose hunt. And now we're finally down to going and chasing this ram for Robin. And we don't have to wait on anybody. We just, we go. Robin and I are going to the mountains, doing what we've done for so many other people, and now we get to do it for ourselves.
In addition to Robin's bighorn sheep tag, she also has a bull elk and mule deer tag for this area. John has a black bear and a wolf tag as well. With the Huskama advantage on their side and a lot of country to pick apart, when the best of the West returns, the first shot will be taken. Keep it here on your Long Range Hunting Authority. The Best of the West is brought to you by the Wild Sheep Foundation, GunBroker.com, Cryptech, Camo, The Best of the West Shooting Systems, Defiance Custom Actions, Hornady, Accurate, Deadly, Dependable, Huskama Optics, and LongRangeStore.com. One of the things about hunting sheep in this country is it can definitely be just like finding a needle in a haystack. Any outfitter, any guide, any hunter can probably go up there and find those sheep if they're in their normal little places. But when the grizzly walks over the ridge and they blow out, or like this year, one of the biggest impacts that we had to deal with early on was quite a bit of smoke. But then as the year progressed, uh, we got in the middle of September and we had a very unseasonably amount of snow day after day after day and those rams, a lot of those rams moved. Now, when I say rams moved, there's some of these sheep that might only move three or four or five or six miles from summer grounds to winter ground. And there's other of these sheep in this exact area that we're hunting that travel over 80 miles and they say, well, that area is not even 80 miles big, but the loop that they make from where they summer in Yellowstone Park and where they go clear over into Montana and make the loop all the way around to the bottom end of that area, it's over 80 miles, and then they go back in the summer. The experience tells me, because we've done so many sheep hunts in there, I oftentimes know where those rams are gonna be before they even know they're going, because I've seen them in that area. But when you get the strange weather patterns, uh, it can throw you a curveball or two. It was all business the first two days of Robin's hunt. Locating a nice ram was first priority, but when you have multiple tags to fill and you're covering 30 plus miles a day on horseback, it's only a matter of time until an opportunity presents itself. So we started out the one morning. As we started up the ridge, there was actually a couple of guys on foot ahead of us, and this deer had walked out of the timber patch and watched one of those guys go over the top of the ridge. And he just stood there for the longest time and John says, you want to kill him? I said, well, sure, he's a pretty nice old mountain buck and he's got pretty heavy horns and just a nice, nice type of deer. So I laid down there over the backpack and, and got settled in on John's rifle and squeezed it off. Level, check your level. All right, give it a good squeeze when you're ready. Ready. Whack. Busted his shoulder. Work the bolt. The left side of the tree. Down and out. I hit him in the front shoulder and he spun around and tipped over behind the trees. That was pretty fun. One thing about it, if little sister has big brother's gun, things are in danger. Pretty nice old mountain buck, kind of heavy and dark horned. Not real big, but he's a nice buck. If a one-shot kill from 908 yards wasn't impressive enough, the next day before John and Robin reached sheep country, a nice six-point bull was spotted bedded in the timber. Whack. With a 10 mile an hour wind call, Robin touched off another strike. Now, with only one tag remaining and four days to fill it, Robin and John can recommit their full attention to finding a nice ram. After the break, it's more high country mountain adventure, right here on The Best of the West. This hunt was one of those hunts that we had every kind of weather. We had beautiful bright bluebird days. We had snowstorms, blowing snow days that I finally said, okay, we're gonna recover a day because you can't see past the hood of the truck. And other days you couldn't see out the vehicle because the wind was cranking. 
there were days on the ridge line that you couldn't hardly stand up. You couldn't hardly stay on your horse, the wind was blowing so hard. But it's one of those things, some years we get a lot of wind, some years we don't. But it's part of the, the test in the sheep hunting. these horses to cover a lot of ground and try to get up on a high mountain somewhere and we hunt long range. And what I'm meaning by that is a lot of people get right in there where they think the animals are and I don't want to bump the animals. I intentionally try to get a mile or two miles or maybe even three miles away to where I have a lot of elevation advantage and I, I can look at ten ridges and I can look out in little bitty holes in the timber and pick those rams out. And Robin's actually better at that than I am, but that's the way that works some days. So, But we get back way away from it and look and keep picking on that stuff until we find a ram. And then that's where the horses really come in because we can slide down a mountain, hit a trail in the bottom or get to a ridge top and hit a trail and we can cook up there, kick them up into a gate and we can get four miles up the ridge and drop down another ridge and get right in there quickly because in this part of the country we've got enough grizzlies and wolves and coyotes and golden eagles probably take more sheep than all the rest of the predators do put together. The quicker you can get on those sheep is the better way that is to go. In fact, I've told a lot of people that. They say, what's the best way to stock a sheep? I say, the quickest way you can get there and get him shot. Having moved in for a better look at these rams, it appears there's not a shooter in the bunch. Having passed on several rams in the same age class already in the hunt, pressure is starting to build with only a couple more days left in the season. With well over 100 miles in the saddle this week, John and Robin have covered a lot of ground and seen a wide variety of animals. A couple dozen mountain goats, lots of elk and mule deer, a few bull moose. They even cross paths with a pair of river otters in the low country. In all that country, and with countless hours behind the glass, John and Robin just can't seem to glass up a mature ram. Having checked all of the favorite nooks and crannies from over the years, it looks like it might be time to find some new ones. So we had a tip from a friend of a friend and he, there was a couple of rams that were supposed to be in this area and he also had someone else that needed a ram and we're getting down to the last days here, the very last days of the season and we're about to eat these tags and it's really, it's getting, it's getting kind of tense. We're trying to figure out what we're going to do about it and we're still, we're scrounging a lot of country trying to find a good ram and it's just not turning up until we get this tip. The option is to take the truck and go down into the canyon. And we met up with the other gentleman there and, and the other group. And, and we went up the canyon and we glassed both sides of it looking. And we never couldn't find any of the rams. There was a couple of deer that were in the grass and stuff. And they looked kind of dark silhouette in the morning light. And he really had to look to try to figure out what they were for sure. But they were just deer. And so we went on up the river bottom there and, and we split up and we actually turned around and started coming back down and the other party went on up around the corner past where we could get a vehicle and they were looking for these rams too so it's trying to find these rams for for everybody and we just happened to when we came back down the valley there was a draw there and there was a couple of dark silhouettes and I asked John, I says, are those deer? Because they still, they looked similar to the deer and as I was looking out the side of the vehicle, out his side of it. And he stops and looks, he says, no, those are sheep. So then we're all excited. And as they come out of the draw, there's the couple of rams that we'd had the tip on. Hey, Big D, can you hear me? Yeah, I got you. 
Yeah, we got them down here. There's two rams in there. Anyways, come on back down the road if you want to join the party. Okay, yeah, I guess we'll be headed that way directly. Give us a little time and we'll be there. We'll wait on you. They ain't going nowhere. Robin's been waiting over 20 years for this moment. And with every step the ram takes further up the canyon, you can't help but think, how much longer can she wait? The Best of the West is brought to you by The Wild Sheep Foundation, Gunbroker.com, Cryptech, Camo, The Best of the West Shooting Systems, Defiance Custom Actions, Hornady, Accurate, Deadly, Dependable, Huskama Optics, and LongRangeStore.com. For information about hunting with Morning Creek Outfitters, please contact John at 307-587-5343 or by email at jport06 at hotmail.com. For more information about the products and gear used on today's show, please visit longrangestore.com or call 1-866-754-7618. watching these sheep as they're starting to graze and they're grazing a little further away and a little further away. We've got the one rifle that we've got dialed in and it's got a suppressor on it and that means that those animals aren't going to spook and blow and run when the first shot happens. Because we had found the sheep first, I got first shot. I got to take the ram that I wanted and we had it set up to where when I shot, then I had to get off the rifle and let the other gentleman in for his shot. I was pretty worried about it at first, but as I laid down there and got set up on the backpack and got behind the rifle and John's talking to me and coaching me. Okay. Level good. Mm -hmm. Ready, give it a good squeeze. <laughs> Walking up to this realm, it's, it's so exciting. I've tried all these years, I've done this for so many other people, and this was my realm. It was a really fulfilling moment. We probably rode more than 150 miles, probably more like 200 miles on this hunt. We looked at an estimated 60 rams or so on this hunt, so we covered a lot of ground just trying to find that one special ram, and it, it takes a lot of horsepower to do that. It takes a lot of getting up early to do that. It takes a lot of getting in late to do that, and above all, I'd say Little sister was pretty determined. All right, looks mighty nice, Robin. Congratulations on a great ram. It's so rare that you get these daily doubles, especially on sheep, that we went and helped them carry the other ram down to my ram. We're getting down to the wire. A few days left to go in the season, and run into Howard here. He was, he'd been running all over looking for ram too, huh, Howard? That's right, 28 <laughs> days. So we ganged up and uh, we spotted these rams here this morning and good tip from my friend Mead Dominic at 7D Ranch. A couple dandy rams and 
rare thing I think in my lifetime of 136 or 137 rams. I've had this happen one other time on bighorns and once on dolls. And, but little sister finally got a ram. So, Thank you. About That's 70 so sheep hunts we've done together and finally got one, did we, Bob? Finally got one. Finally got my tag, had an opportunity to do it for myself. At the end of it, you go home with a really incredible animal most of the time. And for those of us who've hunted sheep, and that's one of those things that you become addicted to, it's worth everything. It's worth all of that physical pain and mental anguish that you go through trying to see if you're tough enough to last out that hunt or that season. I can tell you this out of all the sheep hunts that I've done, this one with Robin, after all we've done together, this one with Robin is going to be guaranteed in my mind forevermore.